No, I don't think it should be a contest. Somebody's gonna die. <laughs> After scared, you think, you know? Yeah. I think you're in control, but are you? Work your way up, be careful. <laughs> it was a good day to die, but it wasn't my turn. We don't need no stupid trophies around here. I have a feeling this will be one adventure I'll never forget. These are the Chugach Mountains of Alaska, a desolate land of jagged peaks and snow. Below us, rivers of ice are still chewing the earth, remnants of the last ice age. This surreal Sierra stretches over 300 miles across the southeastern underbelly of the Alaskan Panhandle. I am breathless, gazing at peak after peak, resembling porcelain Matterhorns. Between their sharp ridges, huge glaciers lazily snake their way to the ocean. These mountains resemble make-believe paintings, not reality as I know it. They are so sculptured and caked with snow. I feel I'm looking at some hideously exaggerated landscape from Never Never Land. All that lacks is a black velvet backdrop with palm trees for that full gaudy effect. But, uh, white out on the road a lot, eh? Yeah, about 95% of the time. It's pretty nasty. It's different to be in a land where sometimes even the law has unique definitions. At St. Lodge, I discover a building underneath a mound of snow Mike says was 16 feet deep in the winter months. It's already the second week of April, but the snow banks are still so huge. Inside the lodge, I find 20 of North America's best snowboarders. They're assembled for a pep talk by Mike Kozad. Everyone's here for the first ever World Extreme Snowboarding Competition. Kozad speaks and the boarders listen. Most of these guys are hardcore riders. It's pretty wild just to have them all together in one room. The riders choose starting positions by drawing their names out of a bin. The whole ordeal takes a bit of time, so I sit back in my usual spectator mode and take it all in. To emphasize the danger, 
We're all made to watch a video of this guy ragdolling during the recent extreme skiing competition. A twisted premonition of what may lie ahead for these characters. No way the best man win, and it's either edging skills or it's gonna be hospital bills, baby. Yeah. Ride or just play? Both. Playing is riding. Riding is playing. <laughs> I'm not that. Actually, I'm uh, that woman in Dr. Chivago. Remember her? I'm happened? going incognito. I'm actually going to in the car up there. The media circus arrives. There's Keiji from Japan Snowing Magazine. <laughs> she doesn't know what to expect. Everything's big and bad and dangerous out here. <laughs> Then there's Richie Fowler. An Alaskan with an attitude from Anchorage. serious stuff to organize in order to make this event work out. The competition itself will use three different locations on three separate mountains during the week. While day one utilizes a helicopter to get competitors to the top, the other days make use of a ski-equipped beaver. Its familiar buzz is heard all day as it delivers the competitors, judges, safety crews, and everyone associated with the event to the mountains. I know that some of these peaks will be first snowboard descents, but frankly, I doubt anyone has ever stood on some of these summits. Just climbing them would be such a chore. They are so removed from the nearest trace of civilization. I try to imagine how one can judge such an event. Uh, the rule is you have to start in the starting gate and finish at the finish line. <laughs> and that's it. You can do anything you want, as sick as you want to be, down the, any, you know, anywhere you want to go. Steeps, cliffs, airs, fast turns, as sick as you want to be. Up first is Donnie Mills. Donnie boards with the grace of a seasoned rider. He's one of those strong local boys who loves to hike for his runs. Lifts and Baldies, 
so guys like Donnie do a lot of hiking to bag their turns. How was that, Donnie? Awesome. Huh? Awesome. Gee, soft. A lot better than the first one. Donnie, <laughs> where do you live on snowboard? Do you want the truth or you yeah. want... <laughs> Wisconsin. Oh, <laughs> Wisconsin. Yep. Are you on a cheese hill? Yeah, that's why. I, it was too wimpy to ski on, so I had to find something new. And you came here. Yep, and then I came back up here and been bored and ever since. Yeah, okay. Bella, I think this is a pretty well chosen spot for the Extreme World Championships. Everywhere you look, there's seven of them. It's not really your main YouTube ones. No, I did a lot of air too. I barely unwind from Donnie's run, and it's John Griber's turn. I thought I'd just start the runoff with a big bang and just go go big because I couldn't go home. It was too far, so I had to go big right off the way. It was definitely a scary line. I, I don't. I guess I probably would have done it in Jackson, but since there was a competition, I, it really pushed you even harder to do things that maybe you really didn't feel quite good enough to go for, but you kind of went for it anyway because you knew that there were judges at the bottom. But after I landed off that cornice, I knew that. I knew that I had a really good run going. I knew that <laughs> I knew I wasn't dead because those rocks came up really quick and I had to stop very sudden and make it around a small little uh, pile of boulders. I met John during some filming at Jackson Hole, Wyoming. He and Steve Koch are amongst a few riders with lots of mountaineering experience. It was a huge mountain. Um, it was just massive. There's a, a million lines, countless lines to pick through different things. If you're just free riding, I'd probably just go right down the main gully, but during a competition and you're being judged, you want to pick something that looks just so extreme and just so incredible. So I'd always look for the most gnarly thing right off the bat. I would hate to have been a judge that day because you just had to watch when you just wanted to close your eyes. I mean, there's so many times People are heading towards a 200-foot cliff band, and you're just either screaming at them or just yelling in your mind just to stop. And people, had, you just didn't know what they were going to do because, you know, you're just being judged once again, being judged on something that I, I feel that shouldn't be judged. John holds some impressive first snowboarding descents in the Tetons near his home. He even rode in Patagonia with Jim Zellers, who now joins the judges eyeing his run from below. a day to compare with that yeah. day of what those athletes were doing. It was just the most incredible yeah. snowboarding I've ever seen. Oh, the the chopper now delivers a new group of riders to the top. Among these is Steve Koch. I anxiously await his run. After the first, I had more time to, to view the face and to pick, you know, what I considered my ideal line. Just what I would do normally, regardless of judges or film crews or photographers or anything like that. What I considered the most technical aesthetic line for me, I was really cautious through this one section, as I am when I'm in the mountains uh, regularly, cautious not to get in over my head or to get into a situation that's it's going to be potentially dangerous. Dodge's line looks a bit out of bounds there, Cobby. Yeah, I think the judge is okay. Having shed that bad boy image from a few out of bound escapades at Jackson Hole Ski Resort, Koch now emerges as the hopeful contender with mountain smarts. Everybody's calling this a festival.
By now, they're all edgy about it being a judged event, especially one like this, turned on its side for steepness. Koch sets precedence by choosing lines beyond the event's perimeter. The judges only reluctantly allow for his run to be termed inbounds of the competition area. I hesitated a little while and then finally got up my huevos enough to, to jump and jumped and landed it and was really happy and ecstatic about landing it. A different world, such a special place, so remote and removed from from the states as we know it. Hard landing. Did you have any fun though? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> what is fun? No, it's steep, steep, steep. By the end of the day. Griber is leading the actual competition. We guys missed the hors d'oeuvres, smoked salmon, cream cheese, cheese bagels. And bagels. Yeah. We're gonna spend 20 bucks just a person just to eat up here in Santa, so we might as well spend 20 bucks and have seafood. That's why we're here. There's, there's our pantry up there in the Winston box. The Winston box. Right. And here's our fridge out here in the window. I, uh, snow hotel. What do you want? An Atco trailer instead of a snow cave? Atco trailer yeah. rules. I mean, a little loud at night. A little but... loud at night, but that's no Oh, problem. yeah, that's only because there's snowboarders here this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tensions are high at Sena, and everyone tries to cut loose with some partying. Kozad encourages us to party in the snow cave. He wants to save his lodge from the wrath of the snowboarders. His friends, the Crud Brothers, spent three weeks digging this thing out of a snowbank behind the lodge. Quiet morning comes as a nice change from last night's hell raising. We'll go find those other two.
drums and it's played by you. Be it in to laugh or tell the truth. Try to say what you really feel. And then you'll see the world reveal. for the day here. Just try to keep, put my bindings don't pop open and I'm going to go big, many big cliff drops I can fit in. Yeah. That's about it. Right. It's kind of hard to sit here and look at all this terrain without riding it. On day two, we fly to a previously unnamed peak. It's christened New World. My face is pancaked to the window of the chopper. I just can't believe this terrain. Sean Farmer's turn is next. Leave it to Farmer to drop the most impressive entry, right off the top. He really motors on his runs. It may seem plain precision riding, but get a load where this guy is. He doesn't even slow down between the rock bands. One wrong move here and your hamburger meat at the bottom. I don't think guys like Farmer realize the magnitude of this place. How could you? Competitors only get a quick glance at their lines, and that's usually from a helicopter on the way up. Farmer is one of those pro riders that guys look up to in the sport. 
You hear local boarders always complaining that it's the pros who get all the attention. Sure, they get in all the films and magazines, but they also have the most at stake. They gotta keep up the rep with all their bros. From below, I searched the mountain for Greta Gaines, the only woman competing in the event. Women are, are built for snowboarding. They have a, tend to have a low center of gravity. They tend to have, um, the women that I've taught, very good balance in the first airs, and they, they pick up the turning patterns really quickly. They don't seem to have that same problem of having just too much speed. The men that I've taught, they just want to go straight up. I felt sorry for a lot of the men. I thought they were putting a lot of pressure on themselves to be glorious, and be huge, bigger than life. And some people were doing some stuff that I thought was really dangerous. And the judges were just their eyes were bugging out watching this thing. I wanted to look good coming down. That's basically all I care about, looking good when I ride. <laughs> so I did my hair, and I put on some lipstick, and I winked all the boys at the top, and then I, uh, I just shone. I think women are into self-preservation, and I think that that's why there are few of them attempting uh, some of the more extreme hairball kinds of snowboarding attempts that men are making. And uh, for me, I know it's, it's very mental, and I think I have to push myself harder to overcome my fear than um, men do. And I don't know if that's testosterone or what. Greta's also from Jackson Hole. It takes a big ski resort to produce seasoned backcountry riders. It's great to see her hold her own. Speaking of pro riders, there's always Nick Parada. one of those guys who's expected to do well in the contest. Nick's best results occur in the last two days. I wonder, maybe he just doesn't know any better. 
or rather, is he totally oblivious to the dangers? But that's just it. Extreme snowboarding demands a stature of collectivity, calmness, and skill. Nick's used to globetrotting a lot. He snowboards places like Chile, Japan, New Zealand, and Europe all the time. The guy's all over the world, either with film crews or photographers. But I think this whole experience in Chugach humbles that cat somewhat. This is a 1952 Beaver. I was born in 1951. It's still sweet. I like this airplane. I look around the arena serviced by choppers and planes. Where else could something like this take place? <laughs> Only in Alaska. <laughs> in April, it doesn't get dark until after 9. By then, Kozad is hosting a square dancing hoedown. The party continues late into the night. It grows, feeding itself from some surplus energy. The morning fails to disclose the full picture of last night's activities. But hey, these guys have reputations to keep up. Everyone is tense again. Day two may have knocked their socks off, but what's in store for day three? First woman ever down python, and she did it on a snowboard! What a star! The word of the day is hurry up and wait. What surprise will Kozad pull out of his hat today? The situation we have here is competitors trying to decide whether they're going to run the event today or not, or have a play day, and where they're going to run it. Snow conditions force a change of location. Yet, another peak is scouted with the beaver. We named this mountain White Room.
It's another hairball location. The avalanche crew gives the okay. It's Steve Klassen's turn. He launches off the cornice and carves sweet ones down the main shoulder. Steve's livelihood is tied very close to snowboarding. He's got his own snowboarding shop in Mammoth Lakes. Yeah, I think one of the raddest things about being up there was the sudden exposure. It's like, you're down here at your ski area, like I ride at Mammoth Mountain, and there's a lot of great places to ride at Mammoth Mountain. A lot of cool extreme stuff, but you can only get so exposed at a ski area because they'll rope stuff off. You gotta go into the backcountry to get exposed, but in Alaska, you're like totally exposed for 4,000, 5,000 vertical feet if you wanna be, and you can be. It's definitely a jolt to the system. from the helicopter when I was going up, there was a way in and a way out. I got to the entrance of the ridge and I was stuck up on this ledge. It was about probably 100 feet down below me to the rocks. Uh, there was rocks below me. I was just stuck on this cliff ledge. I thought that if I could get and I was, you know, feeling the rocks, inching my way in. Um, there was like some loose rocks up there. I was like you know, kind of tossing the loose rocks away because there were some loose ones. Just kind of side slipping in, getting a feeling for what was going on, but it was rad. And then I made a move, I made a big move. It was, it was gnarly. I don't know what made me go, but if I wouldn't have made that move, it would have been sure death. The snowboarders are getting just a bit cocky near the end of the event, but Jason Morbay is out to have fun. He's been scoring consistently well throughout his runs. I did some great free riding with Jason on Diamond Peak just last week. The event was to be held there, but the sun and wind dictated otherwise. Jason raved about the run on Diamond. Morvey is no slouch and sure picks the rad lines. He likes those cliffhangers. It doesn't even matter about the competition anymore. I just want to get as many runs as I can in. Just make turns, catch some air. Thank you. 
The plane brings in another load of riders. Dave hatches with this bunch. I should have kept traversing on my toe edge, but I decided to throw a heel edge, caught a rock, high sided, did two huge ragdolls, catapulted like 30 feet on my second ragdoll, thought I was going to hit my head for sure on this big boulder, just cringing the whole way, waiting to hit it, landed like two feet from the rock, and then stopped right before this huge cliff man. And if I would have tumbled off that, it would have been over. I probably would have went the whole way. I'm just so happy to So what do you think of this plan? Here's a rider is consistently searching out the steep roots. Each run is strong yet controlled. Today I was kind of scared a little bit, just because of the, my last run, I took the fall, you know, I took the close to near death fall and it just shook me up, you know. It was just so scary because I was in control one second and I was tumbling the next. It was like, I didn't sketch out coming and do it, you know, slide out and then pitch. It was like, I was just making a turn and then... <laughs> Last time. <laughs> so? So, yeah, hopefully, it'll do it this time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mike Davenport must have sensed that Hatchet was having a fantastic run. I've seldom seen such aggressiveness as Tex. Here, he just catapults so smoothly into his run. Davenport attacked right from the start. He plays with the mountain, taking air off obstacles en route. He really makes it look like he's having such a great time. It was beginning to feel like things were getting to the wire. Good talent. 
good group of riders up here, I think, who uh, are not just in the ordinary contests and stuff, just out here to ride the extreme conditions that Alaska offers. I think everyone's having fun, pretty much. It's kind of hard not to. Best place to ride. Got to see probably the best terrain on, on the planet for snowboarding. Just incredible steeps, half pipes, 50 foot half pipes, cornices, wind lips, quarter pipes. Just anything you can think of as far as the eye can see, all accessed by helicopter. It was just as much as a stoker to, to watch one of your bros just pull a gnarly line, you know, as it was for you to do the same. It was just a great, great time. Being here is a very educational experience. I recommend that all hillbillies, hicks, and cowboys should come here and experience the education. <laughs> Ted certainly turned when it was Richie's turn to ride. He likes his air. Riding the Chugach was not new to this Anchorage local. Richie Fowler logged lots of flying time with the heli outfit at Sena. He was famous for his trickster backflips in the middle of nowhere. We came down, heard about a helicopter being down here, so we had to come down, take a drive, and check it out. Got down here, and they had like a little bubble heli, two seater. It was crazy. They crashed. That story's over. But anyway, so we hooked up the next year. They got a Jet Ranger. Did a little skid. That was fun to eat. A couple years later, I came around, we were talking with Gozeb, finally plugged him in, hooked him up on getting a snowboarding stream going on up here for Alaska and a little bit of exposure for us. And it worked out well. Contest I've ever been in on the anything, and everybody's just kind of banding together. It's all 20 borders against one mountain. Everybody's telling you where the snow is, where the rocks are. Don't go here, go there. And I was scared two days. Yeah, it hey, you whined enough yesterday, no up. Hey, I did no whining. Just, just. Everyone waited for Jay's last run. Liska had been leading the pack with the most points by the end of day two. Stop if it's really big, but if you can see the bottom when you're on top, then it should be all right. Um, so when I'm coming up on those cliffs and stuff, I just kind of 
make a couple turns, don't stop. Just be looking over it when you're turning. If you see the bottom, just put it straight. Get back in the back seat a little bit for the land. Cake or what? Mm, a little bit weak today, but I thought, when I came down, I thought it a lot worse. Then I went and looked back at it. I hung in there, I guess. I did some, did some stuff. Right on. It was exciting. Good spectating. Too much. <laughs> he must have lost all his points in that glacier run, just trying to stay alive. Where are you from, Jay? Jay Dave, what do you think Anchorage, Alaska, Alaska the Great Land. Bruce, right Winning here. lost its priority long ago. It was the experience that ruled. As far as the winners, Davenport came first, with Hatchet placing second and Farmer in third. But the best part was that almost any of these guys could have taken this event. The best comments I keep hearing is that nobody died.
Peter, what about the sponsor's shots? Harvey, just put them in here. It'll be all right. Hey, Steve. Steve, you want to... My new fuzzy. Tell me about your new board there. Oh, you this got. isn't mine. This is someone else's. Yeah, Who's, whose board is it? That's your new model, isn't it? The, the, the green hair uh, butt fur. This is the Phoebes. Furbies. Fabies. Top sheet. The best thing about her is this releasable binder right here. Steve really likes it. She's going to be into the bone. Yes, I like to comb feet. my yeah. hair. I like to take yeah. my clothes off and rub my ass on them. <laughs> <laughs> you see, if you run out of toilet paper, all you got to do is bend that high back one quarter turn, three point stance, and run. Clean it up. <laughs> How buddy? It's so board, rad. Board How's that stuff work, dude? Hey, keeps you bronze and not burned. Are you a professional model? I'm aspiring. <laughs> and what? Well, aspiring, you know. But I have to compete with the snowboarders. It's really hard. I was really happy with the performance of my outdoor research gloves. <laughs> 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 I was really, really happy with the performance of my Wave Rave jacket here. You know, you could buy those Wave Rave jackets in Mammoth Lakes at a store. It's called Wave Rave also. What's <laughs> it's right on, it's right on Main Street in Mammoth Lakes, in between Slocums and Gringos. Stop them by and get your rentals here. <laughs> Oh, but of course, there's no way I could have done even half as good as I could have done without my Florian clothing. <laughs> and, I mean, without my Florian clothing, what would go better than a straw snowboard? Ah, uh, morning in paradise. We, we tried to please the butt fur people, you know? Mm -hmm. And this is what they've done. The snowboarders, look at that. They, they didn't go for the furry they board. They did not go for the furry board. Oh, well, snowboarders are a tough crowd to please. They are tough, you know? They're very peculiar about their sport. But instead, we have it a bikini shot. Looks good on me, though. <laughs>
Don't try to tell me what's right or 